us out on this incredible training. Um, I just feel so privileged that Kathy Cocazella, um, our US field manager, uh, actually suggested to do a training with our team. So that's how awesome you all are because there's no way that she would have the time to do a training with every team out there. So right. you all are doing something right and you're catching um, home office's attention. So I just want to give you a brief introduction of uh, just a little bit of what we're going to cover tonight, but some information about Kathy. Uh, because she's really an incredible trainer with Home Office, and I feel really blessed that she's tied to our team, Team Anchored. Um, Kathy, we were talking um, on a phone call last week, and we were talking about recruiting, and I think we, we all, a lot of us believe and know how amazing it is to share our amazing opportunity with people. Um, and if it wasn't for someone sharing it with me 20, almost 24 years ago, celebrating my 24th year anniversary, I never would have even thought about buying the kit and trying on Pampered Chef. And it has completely changed my life and the course of my life. Um, and I know that all of us benefit from Pampered Chef in so many ways. So we're not going to go over all the ways tonight, but we are going to concentrate on a few tools in ways that you can improve your show opening, show closing. And then Kathy has a new tool. It's actually the Opportunity Brochure. We've had that forever, but we don't really use it on our shows. And she's going to teach us how to use it on our virtual shows and live shows. But let me just give you a little bit of information about Kathy. Um, you have to read all that stuff. No, I'm going to just read some of it because I it's think like it's boring. I think it's really important <laughs> that um, you're not just listening to, you know, just an anybody. <laughs> she <laughs> is a somebody and she has been around the block with direct sales for a long, long time. Uh, Kathy actually comes from direct sales um, and had o over, I think you said 30 directors on your team at one point. Right. which is a pretty huge organization. So she gets direct sales and she gets management and leadership. Um, but she's our U.S. field development manager. Um, she lives here in Colorado and I need to be taking advantage of her more. She lives in Arvada. She's probably about 45 minutes from me. I'm a little bit more south of her. Um, mm -hmm. But she's a jock because every time I see pictures of her on her Facebook page, she's riding bikes. Um, she, she does long distance bike rides, like in good shape bike rides. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that was three months ago, honey. It's I great. know. And you know what? I got to tell you, we're a mile I mean, high, so it's a lot harder to ride a bike and we've got a ton of mountains and hills and you know, it's, it's steep. So that's, that's what she the fun does. Part, Mary. Huh? Mountains. My husband did look out mountain today. Oh my goodness. I'm much more of a wimp. I'm like, it's cold. If I have to wear a coat and a big thing over my face, it's not fun. Yeah. I mean, I really, I, I'm just so envious of that. <laughs> um, but anyway, Kathy uh, has been in our uh, sales office since 2009. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's when she joined Pepper Chef, but she's got a long 35 hit year history in direct sales. Um, as a manager. So she's really one of our be most beloved field reps. Field oh, field. you say that to all the are. girls. You really <laughs> are. You're, you're really well loved. Um, I hear great things about ditto, you. All the time. Yes, from other <laughs> leaders. They tell me that all the time. Um, but I will tell you I'm the most fun though. Julie most and fun. Judy and Stacia, they think they're fun, but I'm the most fun. Let's just clear that up right now. She's the yeah. best fun, and I think she probably has the best tan, too. <laughs> but you know what? Kathy really loves our business. Um, she really, really loves uh, working with the consultants and leaders in Pampered Chef, and she really has a passion and a heart, and we all know that. We can see her heart big time. Um, she loves families, and she loves the fact that we work really hard to work around our families because that's exactly what she did. She raised two kids when you mm -hmm. were in, doing your direct sales business. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing you guys, uh, she didn't put on here, but Kathy is a certified John Maxwell trainer. 
So we're really getting incredible training and knowledge here from Kathy. So just know that she really is uh, the best of the best. So we are so excited to have you on board, Kathy. Her last name is Cocazella, if you ever want to look her up or Facebook friend her. Um, and she is going to help us tonight with some incredible ways to share our business. Okay. Thank you, Miss Mary. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me on and, um, I know this organization is growing like crazy and there's lots of wonderful leaders in this organization that can really support the growth. And uh, so that's why I told Mary, I said, this would be really fun to do this because you guys are growing already and I, I want to help you grow even more. I know, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but in 2017, this organization was a $1.5 million team. So, oops. And already, I mean, we're not even into, um, you know, finished with November and you're almost at 1.2 million. So I, I'm expecting you guys to exceed that 1.5 million. In 2017, you guys had 255 new recruits. Um, I think Yvonne recruited like 25% of those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Yvonne. <laughs> and um, already in 2018, you guys have 219, which is amazing. So you certainly can beat that 255, but you're going to have to pour it on the last six weeks. But this is a perfect time to pour it on and to recruit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some slides with you guys. So I'm going to click my little share button, and then I'll um, come back to here in a little bit. So let me pull it up. And can you guys see it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh, all right, so we are going to jump right in. So there's actually, um, oops, sorry, I think I skipped that slide. Okay, maybe I didn't. Nope. Oh, okay, well, we're going to come back. Anyway, so um, there's about six really important things that you need to be doing at your shows to recruit, and I'm only going to talk about really about two of them. And that is really the, um, what I like to call the intriguing intro and the confident close. Um, and then the opportunity brochure is part of that. But I feel like if people get that figured out, and that's the only piece of this they get figured out, um, you are going to see your recruiting double. So I know one of the things that Mary spoke about and, and kind of labeled this workshop is um, something about maximizing all the perks of, of Pampered Chef. And truly, um, you know, recruiting equals success. And, you know, there's this thing that says recruiting fixes everything. And I always say that is if you have a full show schedule. <laughs> so shows always have to come first and then recruiting. So what I want to do is talk to you guys a little bit about your intro. Now, this doesn't matter if you are at um, uh, live or virtual. And I know we have a mix of both here. So we're going to kind of speak to both of those. But the intro really is supposed to be... Um, a place where it's very natural to start to create interest and um, you want to just share you know who you are why you joined and really the key here is to keep it short and sweet leaving them wanting more I think back in the day we used to um, have these kind of big long intros and they were like five or six or seven minutes and you guys I want you to think about it for a minute when you first it arrive to a show. It doesn't matter if you're getting online or if you're actually arriving in somebody's living room. What are you thinking about? <coughs> you're probably thinking about, oh my gosh, I just left my husband at home with three screaming kids with just macaroni and cheese, you know, or you had the bad day you had at work or whatever. So people aren't really ready to hear all of that information right off the bat. So that's why I always tell people keep it really short and sweet. So, whoops, oh, look at that. My computer just fell off my little stand. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I was pulling it closer to me to hope you guys could see me okay. All right. So, anyway, um, so the key really is these are the only things you should tie into your intro. Um, your name, of course. And I do encourage people to say their first and their last name because you want people to start, you know, remembering your name and remembering who you are. And um, so the more you say your name, the more they're going to remember it. And then the length of time with Pampered Chef, 
and why you join. Now, this is just a sentence or two, guys. Uh, <laughs> I have been to lots and lots of shows, and I have had people say, well, you know, I went to a show, and then I called the girl, and then she didn't call me back. So then I just like thought, I'll just wait around for a while. And then she called me like two weeks later, but you know, I don't know. I just didn't really connect with her. So I just, you know, got online and I'm like, they don't need to know all that stuff, right? What they need to know is your name, the length of time, why you joined, just a sentence or two, and then just a little bit, um, I'm sorry, and then just a teaser. So the whole idea is to kind of leave them wanting more right? So the teaser I like to encourage people to use is, I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, all right? So here's how the whole thing would look all together. Oh, wait, actually, before I say that, I want to say something else. So um, we oftentimes hear people say, you know, I joined just to get the kit. I was going to do my four shows and then quit. Now that might be the case for you, but I will tell you that that is not something that we recommend that you do. So we're gonna cross that out. How do you like that? Pretty fancy PowerPoint, huh? <laughs> I had to learn how to do that all by myself, I'll have you know. <laughs> I love it. But what I want you to do is think about when you're telling your story, your goal is to create interest, right? And your goal is to help people to have possibility thinking of what can happen. When you say, I joined because I wanted the kit, I plan to quit after four shows, what people are thinking is, oh, you can do that? Oh, well, that's what I'll do. And so right away, it just sets a, sets a limiting belief on potentially what they could do. All right, are you guys with me? Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Thumbs up? Yeah. yeah. All right, any questions so far? No. All right, so here's an example of what you could say. So I'm Kathy, well, I should have Cocazelle on there, right? <laughs> I've been with Pampered Chef for three years now, and I originally joined because I love the product. So even if I joined just to get the kit and quit, I'm gonna say something like this. Oops. Somebody's got kiddos in the background, they might need to mute. Yeah, I think it's uh, Vicky maybe. There we go, thank you. All right, so um, I originally joined because I love the products and I wanted to earn a little extra income, but I'll tell you what, this business has turned into a lot more than that. And I'll tell you more about that later. So let's get cooking, right? So you're literally just giving them a little teaser right in the beginning of the show. All right, makes sense? Yes. Okay, great. So. That's all I'm gonna tell you about the intro, but then we're gonna come back to it in a little bit. So the confident close, um, or in the virtual party materials, if you guys are virtual and you haven't looked at the, the um, guide for having a virtual party, it's about, oh, I don't know, probably 20 pages, I think I've got it right here, right here, on um, the best success tips for having a virtual party. Um, I really recommend that you guys pull that out. All right, I've got them all here. No, that's recruiting. This is boost your business. All right, I don't have it right now. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, but it talks about your recruiting message that should happen at the end of your virtual party. Now, a lot of people tie that into wrapping up their whole party. So when we're talking about the live show, you'll notice in the, the party outline cards that the confident close, this is where you talk about booking, recruiting, the guest special, and how to place an order. What I'm gonna be talking about is the recruiting part of that confident close, all right? And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be linking back to your intriguing intro where you pretty much promise them you're gonna tell them more. It's kind of like in the beginning when you say, oh my gosh, it's turned into so much more than that. And I'll tell you more about that later. That it's kind of like people are just like, you know, sitting on the edge of their seat, like, oh, I want to know more, right? It's kind of like, have you ever had somebody start to tell a joke and then like they forgot to share the punchline? <laughs> so, um, so this is like people are going to be waiting to hear the end of your story. All right. So really what's happened is in the beginning of your party, you told them why you started, and now you're going to tell them why you stay. All right. Are we good so far? 
Mm -hmm. yes. I have a I have a quick question, Kathy. Yes. In the in the intro, is it okay to say, um, so watch what I do, you know, if you or someone you know may be interested, you know, in trying on the agent or whatever, you know. Is, yeah, is and it so okay to say that? Watch absolutely no i love it and i think i thank you for bringing that up yvonne so since i'm not talking about planting seeds on this particular call i usually put that in that section and planting seeds, planting seeds is really important so right after you do your intro you would definitely want to say something like that you know so watch what i do see how much fun it is and you know picture yourself in my shoes so right what you're doing right away by saying that is you're literally creating that picture that they're going to say, oh, okay, I'm going to watch this from a whole different perspective. I mean, maybe they just left work and found out their hours were cut. And so right. that's why it's super important to say that right after your intro. So yeah, because I usually say it with my intro, so I want to make sure that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Everything you do is okay, Yvonne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay, good. Very good question. All right, so the confident close or the recruiting message, um, I really look at this as two steps. Um, and the first thing is that you're gonna be sharing why you stay. And in that first step, this is the important thing, you guys, is you wanna describe um, two or three ways that the income has really impacted your family. Very specific reasons, all right? So, and then, you're going to share one or two other ways that the business has benefited you. It might be something intangible like the flexibility or the fun or the friendships. Um, it might be about the trips, but you have to be short and sweet, but create desire for the business. All right. So in general, when people do this, what they typically do is they do things like, um, this is so great. I'm hearing a lot of background noise. I don't know if you can identify where that's at, Mary. I just want yeah. the recording to be clear. Well, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and mute everybody. And then you guys, I'm gonna mute everybody. And then if um, if you wanna unmute to ask Kathy a question, go ahead and do that. Let me un let me mute and then Kathy, let me unmute unmute you. Okay. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Um, all right, so let's see. This is telling me I'm muted. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can okay. you guys hear Kathy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, good, thumbs up. All right. Um, so in general, what I tend to hear people do is they say, you know, I love this business. It has brought me some, you know, great extra income. You know, it's helped us to pay for things I didn't imagine that I could pay for. And, um, you know, they're kind of going on like that. It's, it has been super flexible, which has been important to me, you know, because I have two kids. And what's happening when you're speaking that way is very vague. And you sound like every other direct seller in the business. So what you need to do is you need to be very specific, right? So I'll just give you an example of this. Last year I was in um, uh, that's where, Mexico, and I always do coaching appointments with the people that I'm working with when I'm on the incentive trips. Um, it's a really tough gig when you have to sit and look at the ocean and at the Cocoa Beach Bar and, <laughs> and do a coaching appointment. But anyway, um, Nevertheless, I do. So I was having this conversation and this guy was really having a lot of trouble getting even getting people interested. And she did a lot of shows and I'm like, Linda, I can't figure this out. Like why you, you know, you're not getting more recruits. And so I said, tell me what you're doing to create desire. And she's like, oh, I tell him this, and I tell him that. And it was all these generalities, like I just explained to you guys. And then I said, okay, so let me ask you a question. And I'm gonna ask all of you this question. So I want you to write down your answer what are two or three ways the income has impacted you or your family? Now, I don't care if it's that you, you know, have been with the company for only six months and you just bought a new couch that you have had, you know, to replace the one you've had for the last 10 years. I, I don't care what it is, but some kind of specific financial thing. So if you paid off debt, if you're willing to share how much, I would put down how much. If you're paying off student loans, 
Um, if you are contributing to household bills and income, you know, with your income, what specifically are you doing? So Linda says to me, she goes, well, Kathy, my husband was underemployed for six years. And, um, you know, he was working really hard to get the job that he needed, but it was really challenging. And quite frankly, his income really did not help with the family budget. And I was pretty much responsible for all the bills. And I said, well, what do you mean? Like what bills? She goes, I paid the mortgage. I paid for the groceries. And I said, so, you know, she went on and on. I said, so Linda, are you telling me that if it wasn't for your income, that you would have lost your house and would not have had food on the table? And she said, yes. And I said, you need to share that at your shows. So that's why I want you guys to think about what are two or three specific ways the income has impacted you and your family. All right. And then you can, again, share one or two other ways that the business has benefited you. So think about one other way, maybe two, where um, the business has benefited you. So maybe you were new to the area, <coughs> excuse me, and you didn't know anybody. <coughs> and so the friendships were really important, right? Maybe you take care of aging parents, and so the flexibility was important, or you know, a, um, a child with special needs. I mean, everybody has something right in their life, so maybe sharing something related to the flexibility. So, would somebody be willing to unmute and share maybe um, even just one or two of the ways the income has impacted you? Now, the only people I can see are Mary and Harriet. Harriet, would you be willing to unmute? Yes, I did. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, perfect. So would okay. you be, oh, sorry, I keep flipping the slides around here. So, so would, can you think of something where the income has impacted you? Uh, yes. You know, I live in Arizona, so our electric bills are high. And mm -hmm. um, my income pays the electric bill monthly. Okay. And then I also. Um, and how much is the electric bill? It can go from two to five hundred dollars. Wow, that's significant. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also uh, take care of all the Christmas shopping with it, including Christmas dinner. Nice. And have you ever estimated how much that would cost? Um, probably between six and seven hundred dollars. Okay. Great. And so is there anything else that you use your money for? <coughs> um, just more Pampered Chef products. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's got to support your habit, right? <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. That's great. And how many shows a month do you usually do? Um, well, I've just started increasing it, but um, I, I, was, I was doing um, between two to three a month. Okay. And now I'm... Now my goal is to get four to six a month. Uh -huh, good for you. That's great. Okay. And then can you think of a, an intangible or a secondary way that the business has benefited you? <laughs> yes. In the, in the past year, my husband was um, very ill and I had, um, to, I had to stop doing live shows, mm -hmm. but I could still carry on with Pampered Chef through virtual parties. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. I still got to interact with people and meet new people mm -hmm. through the virtual parties. Okay. All right. So when you do your, um, your confident close, um, I think it's really valuable for you to say, you know, just doing two to three parties a month, I'm actually able to pay for our electric bill. And those of you that live in Arizona know that's between two and $500 every single month. And not only that, we have a debt-free Christmas every year, you know, which is including the meal, the gifts, everything. And I'm able to cover that. All okay. right. And Great. then, sure. you know, and then to say, you know, my husband was ill last year and, um, you know, I still needed to earn income. So I wasn't, you know, leaving the house doing cooking shows. I was working virtually and where else, you know, can you make money sitting in your pajamas and, uh, you know, at home? and have that flexibility. So see, it, it doesn't take long, it's short and sweet, right? But you're giving specific ideas. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being willing to jump in with me. I know I kind of put you on the spot. That's okay. <laughs>
All right, so, um, sorry, I think I, I keep thinking I'm missing a slide here. All right, so what I want to talk about then is the opportunity brochure. So the opportunity brochure, and I don't know if you guys are on the page where you can see my little picture, but I'll put this up by the camera. I actually make little notes on mine and I can take a picture of this and send it to you. Because when you're using this opportunity brochure, um, you want to think of very specific ways that um, the business benefits you within these categories. And to me, this is like the best kept secret, this little brochure. So this is the picture of the opportunity brochure right here. And I'm going to tell you how to use it. And then I'm going to talk about how to do this virtually as well. So what's going to happen is you're going to do, um, you know, your opening at the beginning of the show, and then you dazzle them with all your great stuff. You know, if you're at a party, you're showing the recipe, you're showing products, you're tying everything around your power tool, right? So you decide what one or two power tools you're using. And then you talk about all the other great tools to go around. And then like, by the time you get to your clothes, they're like going, I want everything, right? And make sure in your virtual parties, you're doing this too. You should still be doing themes. You should be creating values. You still should be giving lots of great tips about food and, um, you know, how to use the tools with the food. Um, all those great tips um, about recipes, products, and, and food are super valuable. Um, you know, talking about things like, you know, here's what I make in my quick cooker five nights a week. And anybody who gets it from me, I'm going to give you my own personal ebook, you know, with all the recipes. Or, you know, with a large bar pan, you can make breakfast, lunch, and dinner in this every day. Here's what I make. Anyone who buys this, you're going to get this recipe. So you're creating value. You're creating desire. You're really letting people, um, build it, you're building up the excitement for the, the products and um, for what we have to offer. And so this is why you don't do your whole show opening at the beginning. Because now people are like, I like her. She's great. She gave me some good tips. Or he. I don't know if we have any men on here, but basically what they're doing is, is um, falling in love with what we have to offer. And they also are really enjoying the process with you leading them through this. And it doesn't matter again, if it's live or if it's virtual, even your comments and interacting virtually are going to make them fall in love with you. The other thing that you definitely do want to do if you're going virtual is you want to go live. I always recommend at least three times. You definitely want to do your intro live and you want to do your closed live. And if you can um, do some kind of video in the middle, even if it's pre-recorded and you're doing a short little like guacamole and salsa recipe with your manual food processor or whatever, um, doing something where they can see you in action on a video. Um, I know one of our um, executive directors, Julie Ritter, does a short and sweet video every night that she posts um, for her three nights of her show that she does. So they get to see her in action. They get to kind of know her personality. All right. So basically what's going to happen is you've, you've started this um, show with, you know, I'm Kathy Cocazella. I've been with Pampered Chef for three years or whatever I said before. <laughs> you know, I started because I really love the products. and um, But it's turned into so much more than that. I'll tell you about that, that later. And then you do your show and then you come back to it. So you're going to say something like, so I told you earlier, my name is Kathy Cocazella. I've been with Pampered Chef for three years. I love what I do. And I joined to get the products. But let me tell you why I stay. Now, did you notice what I did there? What did I do? Did you hear how my voice slowed down? My voice, tone, and pitch all slowed down. All right, 40% of your communication is voice, tone, and pitch. And then I paused. And pausing is communication as well. It's saying, I'm gonna say something really important right now, <laughs> right? So when you pause, they are like thinking, okay, what is she going to say right now? And so then I would go into, um, one of the reasons I stayed is because we have been able to pay off, you know, I'm just making this up since I'm not actually selling products like you guys are. But, you know, let's say that um, I, well, actually one thing that I did in my business is we were going to 
to purchase a home and my husband was trying to get him down by $10,000. I'm like, when you're spending this amount of money, what is $10,000? <laughs> and he said, well, do you have $10,000? And so I, you know, all I need is for someone to tell me I can't do something and I'm going to go do it. Right. Anybody with me on that? <laughs> so anyway, I said, I will have that in the next 90 days. So I paid the, a $10,000 $10, towards our um, deposit on our home. So that would be one specific thing I would say, or I paid off X amount of debt, right? And so what's really valuable about, you know, sharing that and then sharing the other benefits is then you can lead right into this brochure. And so what you're going to do is you're going to say something like, um, and so I am sure there are many people right here tonight that may have a need for extra income. And so this is why I want all of you to have this opportunity brochure. Now, if I was doing a live show, everybody would have this brochure in their hands, right? And I'll tell you again how to do that virtually. And so I would say, so I want you guys just to know a little bit about the opportunity. Now, um, if you guys, I don't know how well you can see on the slide, but it, the first category says more money for fun. The second category says um, support the household budget. The third category says a big financial goal. And the fourth category says a full-time income with flexibility. Right? So what I would say is, so what I want you guys to do, uh, to know is about the four different types of consultants that we have with Pampered Chef. All right, because I'm sure there, there could be people in this room that need some extra money. There could be people that you know. Now, the one thing I never say and never want you to say is if it's not for you, maybe it's for someone you know. You can say, this may be for you, this may be for someone you know, but don't say if it's not for you because we don't need to help people say no, right? Because some of those people right off the bat are going, oh my gosh, I could never do that. And then when you say, if it's not for you, they're going, oh, she's talking to me. And you're not, of course, right? So it's always, this business may be for you, it may be for someone you know. So everybody look at your brochure and I want you to look at the very first category, which says more money for fun. And then you're literally going to talk about the number of hours a week and the um, dollar amount. I'm going to switch this to a different slide so you guys can see this better. There you go. This is actually the graphic that is um, available to you to post uh, on your virtual parties. So it's a little bit bigger print. All right, and so let's just talk with the first category. Um, this is a, a, a person that just wants to have more money for fun. They're gonna work just one to three hours a week. They wanna earn around 100 to $500 every single month. And then this is where I use my little, what I wrote in the notes of different types of people. Now this is for somebody who typically wants to maybe get a, a mani-pedi you know, once or twice a month, or maybe they wanna treat themselves to a massage. It might be for someone who likes to buy shoes or purses, or maybe wants to take their husband out to dinner once a month, or maybe just to pay for kids' activities or buy goodies for your grandkids. So you're giving them like five or six examples of types of people that would fit into that category. You guys with me? Okay, so the second group of people um, that join Pampered Chef are people that really need to support the household budget. These people are working three to six hours a week. They're going to be making between $600 and $1,100 a month. And this is somebody who maybe wants to just cover the car payment. Or if you're Harriet, the electric bill in Arizona, <laughs> right? Or the groceries. Or maybe you want to have a debt-free Christmas. Now the third category, this is a big jump guys, because this is people who want a big financial goal. These are people who are working eight to 15 hours per week and they want to earn, uh, and they are earning, this is based on actual consultants in Pampered Chef, they are earning between $1,400 and $18,000 a month. And yes, I said a month. So this is real income being earned by real people. So these are people that are paying for weddings, 
for vacations, for retirement. Um, maybe they want to remodel their house. All right. And then the last category is for people that need a full time income with flexibility. All right. I mean, we all have something going on in our life. Maybe you have aging parents you're caring for. Maybe you have a child with medical issues um, or you have your own health issues. You know, maybe a troubled teenager is taking a lot of your, your time and focus right now. Everybody has something. But I know every single week I'm hearing about people that are quitting their full-time jobs to do Pampered Chef full-time. And these people are earning anywhere from $6,800 a month to $45,000 a month. Now, not everybody makes 45,000, those are our top earners, but it shows you the range of income that our actual consultants are making. So what I want you to understand is that this is a real job where you can make real money. All right, so just going through this brochure piece of this should only take about five minutes. But you, you, know, you did your little intro, you've dazzled them with the products, planted your seeds there, you came back with your own personal story of how it's impacted you. And then right now you've just given them 17 different examples of types of people that would need Pampered Chef. So what's happening when you guys do that is you're literally asking for 17 referrals because you keep saying, this may be for you, this may be for someone you know. And I, trust me, people are sitting in that audience and I guarantee you in the last week or maybe even the last 24 hours, somebody has talked to somebody who said, I wish I had money to cover all these soccer fees for my kids. Or somebody has said, I, you know, I just can't keep working this job between taking care of my new baby or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's just killing me. The thing people didn't say in the last 24 hours or in the last week is, um, I should sell Pampered Chef. <laughs> and so that's why, and this is, I'm not really covering this tonight, but during your confident close, you don't say, hey, have you ever thought about selling Pampered Chef? Because the answer is almost always no, right? You say, hey, are you interested in earning some extra income or just having a little bit more fun in your life? That's what your question's gonna be in your um, checkout chat. But anyway, so back to the brochure. Any questions about kind of sharing those categories as you go through this, talking about the hours and talking about the income? Kathy, this is Harriet. I, I'm a little confused. Okay. Is this, when, when you're sharing the brochure on your virtual party, are you doing this part at the confident close or prior to it? So this is in the virtual party outline, it's called the recruiting message, which is your confident close. So this would be when you're you know, about to wrap up your party or maybe the party's ending tomorrow. Um, you, know, you can decide what is the best timing for you. Most okay. people do it toward the end. Okay. And actually what I recommend people do is they actually go live and do it just like I was, would be doing it at a cooking show. Okay. So what you can do is you can print off, or I mean, you can post this image and people can be looking at it. You know how when you go live, they can, if they're watching you go live, they can literally pull the video off to the side and look at the graphic. Right. So you, you could even direct them to do that. Okay. Okay. So right. let me tell you guys, have you guys ever used this um, graphic, Harriet, have you? I have not. Okay, so it's like the best kept secret, I think. Like to me, this opportunity brochure is gonna turn you into a recruiter if you're not a recruiter. It makes it super simple and oh my gosh, these income levels are, are real incomes and people are amazed, right? So let's look at where you get it. So if you just go to marketing imagery and then click on social, And then you're going to go to um, social booking and recruiting. And then the upper right hand corner, you're going to click on view collection. All right, you guys know how to open these, right? You've done party packs and stuff from marketing imagery. Yeah. All right, are you with me? I am. Okay. <laughs> you're speaking for everyone, Harriet. <laughs> okay. I'll be the voice. <laughs> All right. 
So, and then this is the graphic that you'll find. And then these are super cool. Okay, watch these for a minute. Can you see how they play through like a little video? Mm -hmm. Fun. Yeah. So what's so cool about this is you'll see the green one is about the fun money. The blue one is about the household budget, supporting the household budget. The orange one is about the big financial goal. And then the charcoal gray one is about a full-time income. So you see all the variety of incomes, like when you see the little um, clocks at the end, which I thought was so creative, that's, you know, obviously more hours are going to be put into that. So people that are doing virtual parties, I actually recommend that they put one of these for each day. I know most people are doing a three-day party. So I would post the green one first in your pre-party post. And then on day one, post the blue, day two, post the orange, and day three, post the charcoal gray. Um, I was actually just looking at the page today and they have added some super cute new images. There's probably like 10 new recruiting images under marketing imagery. So you guys want to check that out. All right. Any questions on this, on the virtual side of it? Nope. Anybody else? Don't be shy. I'm going to go see if there's anyone I can pick on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I won't pick on anybody right now. <laughs> I might later though. All right, so this is what I was saying. You wanna tie it all together. You start with why you started, and then your confident um, closing recruiting message. You share your story and why you stay. Remember the three important um, financial benefits and then two other reasons, and then you share the brochure. Now, a lot of people I've worked with say, oh, well, you guys have taught us a sincere recruiting statement. Should we use that? And that's really what you're doing when you use the opportunity brochure is what we used to call the sincere recruiting statement. So, again, these are the different opportunities you have to share. Um, but I told Mary I'd only I do less than 45 minutes tonight, so I'm not going into all that. So, you know, you really, it's really important, though, to build um, relationships, have your intriguing intro, plant seeds throughout the show, live or virtual. you got to be planting seeds. Um, share your story. And then this also includes the opportunity uh, uh, brochure. Whoops, I keep clicking on this thing. Sorry, I'm used to having two screens up in front of me, and I have to disconnect my other screen when I do these. So, <laughs> um, and then your checkout chat and, of course, to follow up. Okay, so this is my call to action for you guys, because I love that you all are here and came and took the time to be here, but nothing good happens unless you take action, right? right. So the first thing I want to challenge you guys to do is to write your intriguing intro. And remember, it's short, sweet, and to the point. It's literally like 60 seconds or less. And then I want you to write your confident close. And then I want you to um, write down, and I can send a picture of this to, did I send this to you, Mary, the picture? But you guys can come up with your own categories too. So I'll, I'll send a picture to you. Um, when we're done, you can post it on your organization page, Mary. But I want you to practice using this, right? And I want you to make sure that your close is, you know, about three minutes, maybe four. And then this is maybe three or four. The whole thing should be under about five to seven minutes to do your closing and talk about the brochure. So if it's more than five or seven, five to seven minutes, you're going way too long. I actually prefer it be like five minutes. And what happens is we are finding out at Pampered Chef through lots of surveys that people don't mind hearing a little bit about it because they're usually quite intrigued when you get to that brochure. But if you go on and on and on, they're like, okay, like when is this girl going to stop talking? <laughs> you know, I got things to do, right? I want to buy stuff. I have questions for her, whatever. All right. So um, 
practice using that brochure. So probably most of you like tonight need to order some opportunity brochures. Um, I encourage everybody to take this home. I mean, it's worth the 38 cents or whatever it costs you because I've just told them about 17 different types of people I'm looking for. And when they see hear that, they're gonna think about it when they see that brochure. When I do the checkout chat, I'm actually gonna ask them um, who they thought of that might be interested, that maybe fit into one of those categories. Can I ask a question, Kathy? Yeah, jump in. Okay, so you said preferably five minutes to talk about about that, including the brochure, your confident clothes, right? Yeah. So that doesn't include like Q&A or, or how does that part work? So um, as far as Q&A on a virtual, are you doing it live? No, well, I was, no, I was talking about during a home party, but for me okay. for virtual, I do a, like a Q&A during, right after my live recipe demo at the end right. of the party. Yeah, okay. So as a whole for, um, that's a really good question. First of all, no, it does not include the Q&A. Okay. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of people that play the ticket game or stealing hearts or that kind of thing at the show. Um, and we're not really teaching that anymore, which is very mm -hmm. hard for me because I actually love that game. <laughs> right, I know. The thing is, there's a lot of people that don't do it very well, and we've been getting lots of negative comments. Yes. So if you're really good at it, go for it. But if you're not confident with the ask me any question game, right. um, I would literally just say, you know, after you share this brochure, I always close with, this is a real job where you can make real money. So any of you that have any questions, I want you to feel free to come up to me and ask me when we check out. And then at the checkout is when I'm going to be asking about this brochure. But typically, no, it does not include the Q&A. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you are doing Q&A live at your party, you literally should, I, this was my best practice, was to limit it to eight questions. I call it the eight point game. Yeah. And what, what's fun about that is it's like when you get to question six or seven, then they're really intrigued. Mm -hmm. And then you cut them off at eight and it's the same kind of thing that you do with your opening. You're like, you know, it's turned into so much more than that, but I'll tell you about that later. So now they're like thinking and you got their wheels spinning. And so when they come up for the confident close, then you can talk to them more about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We do. I liked the game, the eight point game because I didn't have to worry about tickets or whatever. And I told them they were in charge of their points. <laughs> so you know, we told them we, we, we train about, about, yeah, doing like eight questions if, the, if they're new consultants and then answering questions that they feel comfortable answering. Mm -hmm. um, they used to have a Pamper Chef 20 question page that I'm talking about. Are you okay now, Pamper Chef what? They used to have like 20 questions and answers, like a ticket Q&A on the website. Yeah. And so I, I would give it to them and say, pick eight out of here. Yeah, that's smart. They don't. I have it and I, I have copies of it still, but is there a suggested eight that they should be? I think you probably know what the top questions are. Okay. Um, and so I think you should just pick that, like, you know, how, how often do you work? How much do you make? Is it easy to get started? How do you yeah. find your first shows? You know, that kind of stuff. Those are the most common things that people are gonna ask. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So anyway, order your opportunity brochures. Um, and you guys, even if you're doing virtual, I think that every host needs a paper host packet so they can collect orders, they can see what you know, you're know um, you looking at. I know not everybody agrees with that, but I would definitely make sure every host has this um, brochure. I just attended a um, virtual party that was a non paper chef party to kind of learn how they were doing it. I won't say what company it was, but I will tell you they did not do a very good job. <laughs> and um, the gal had actually sent in the mail something to me, which I was surprised about, but I was actually thrilled because during the virtual party, there was really, she did not create desire for any product for me. And I actually like products from this particular company. Um, but I was actually glad that I had the brochure because then I could flip through it and their catalog online was not very um, like, you know, friendly, very easy to use, very intuitive, but definitely I make sure every host has this. 
Um, anyway, then you guys just need to practice, 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 practice. So what I tell people to do is to practice this with, um, you know, two friends or family. You know, I, I say I have two rules. They have to be human and they have to be an adult, <laughs> right? You can't say I practice with my dog, right? Or my goldfish or my five-year-old, right? They have to be adults and they have to be human. So really when you practice this, you guys, if you just figure this out, this one thing can make a huge impact on the number of people that you're bringing into the business. Um, and as Yvonne could attest to, once you're, as our circle of honor achiever, woo -woo, um, mm -hmm. once, you, once you have that full show schedule and you start recruiting, you can pretty much have just about everything you want in Pampered Chef. Yvonne's amazing. Right, Yvonne? Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> just, yeah, I think practice is the key, you know. Um, that's what's hard sometimes, I think, especially, it's, you know, especially hard because everybody knows me on our team, and so they're trying to do what I do, but they don't realize a lot of times that this just takes time and time and over and over practicing, using the right words, and feeling comfortable, and you know, having, a, you know, your your own story changing. So whatever is your story, you know, say it loud, say it proud. It doesn't have to be like someone else's just because you didn't earn trips every year or make this amount of dollars. It doesn't mean you have a story because somebody can relate to you and they might want to make a few hundred dollars extra a month. That's yeah. what I wanted when I first started. Here's so don't feel, I'm sorry, go ahead, Yvonne. No, I was just going to say, don't feel, you know, don't feel like you have to be like, me or anyone else in the business that you mm -hmm. can be successful you can be a rock star recruiter for sure by just yeah. sharing from your own heart because that is really what it's about i feel like no matter no matter what even before you know i started recruiting as much as i did i oh when i shared from my heart that's when i could feel the connection at my parties sure mm -hmm. you have to be you know genuine and you have to you know speak and you know, you have to be able to dig into yourself a little bit and be willing to be a little uncomfortable and, and talk about these yeah. kinds of things. And I think sometimes people are, they're a little nervous. They feel like, oh, that is, that's not very much money or my story is not that good. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. All, every, you know. Everyone has different mindsets, but whatever yeah. your story is, just, you know, share it, share it. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. And I'm, gonna, I'm so glad you brought that up, Yvonne, because it made me think about something else. So when I was new in the business, like, I didn't feel like I had any, you know, like anything significant to talk about as far as an expense that I paid off because I was just using my money for fun and who said it, Harriet, I was buying more products. I mean, you know, I was supporting my own habits, <laughs> my spending habits. Um, but one of the things I did, and I forgot to include this, is I talked about what my director had done. And so when I first decided to, to start recruiting, because I you know, started the business like in October and I hadn't recruited anybody and they were having this recruiting meeting like in May and I was like, recruiting, I don't do that. Like, <laughs> why should I go to this recruiting meeting? And then um, I was like, well, all my friends are gonna be there, so I have to go. But anyway, so that is when I first got the bug about recruiting. And so it was after that meeting that I went to a show and I said, you know, I've only been in this business for five months. But I'll tell you, here's what I want to do. I want to do what my leader has done. She's been in this business for eight years. She makes more money doing this than she does as a full-time school teacher. And um, she works in a district here in Colorado where school teachers get paid very well. And she has gone on eight all-expense-paid trips, one every year she's been here. And I want to do that. And do you know that when I started saying that that month, my first month, I got three recruits. So I was talking about somebody else's story. And when you share your goals like that, I mean, if you don't have anything significant, if you literally just want to say, listen, I've been using all my profits to buy products because I'm just having fun and doing a couple shows a month. But here's what I want to do. And share your goal of what you want to do. And automatically, people gravitate towards you because you want success. And that's when people started asking me questions and um, I started recruiting. We were just talking about this um, on, in the Yellow Group last week. Oh, uh, yeah? We literally were just talking about this, about sharing other people's stories, not just your own. So right. interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but when you share it from a perspective of this is something I want to do, so especially for those people that are brand new, yeah. so how many of you have new people on your team? Like literally they've been on your team for three days. They can't really say, you know, what they've done. So they can say what they want to do. And it may be something their upline did that's a really inspiring story. It just may be something that they want to do. Maybe they say, hey, I've got $25,000 in student loans and I'm going to pay them off with my membership income. Again, just that confidence and the way they're saying that, people are going to be attracted to that. It's like speaking affirmations at your party. It's really yeah. what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, that's super. I love it. Good. All right. So questions. Who has a question? Emily has one. I can tell. Come on, Emily. What are you thinking, Emily? <laughs> I hear you're fun. I figure I'll pick on you. What do you think when you hear all this, Emily? Can I pick your brain for a minute? I don't actually have any questions, but this has actually been fantastic. I love the use of the um, opportunity brochure. Okay. Um, it is definitely something that I hadn't thought to really use before, which is silly because it is a resource that's there for us. Yeah. And what, what part of that did you like, do you think? Um, well, I'm just starting to get into cooking shows and I've really struggled with, um, my confident clothes. Mm -hmm. And so being able to like, just actually just have it there and put it in their hands and go through it with them and actually just saying to them, take this home with you and look at it and share it with somebody that, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I really like that idea. Good. Thank you. Thanks for being willing to talk to me, Emily. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Who else is thinking about how they can use this? Kathy, I just want to just a uh, little testimony. Tanya Ravello started to use it um, from a course she's taking with you. Uh -huh. And she said that's how she recruited her last person. I love it. Coast. Yeah. Where is my little friend Tanya? See? I was hoping she was going to be on. She's doing a pie making class tonight. Oh, I want to go. I know. So she's going to watch the replay, but yeah, she said it. It's totally awesome. Okay. Very good. And I missed Dejan. I was going to talk to Dejan. She's not here anymore. Oh yeah. She kind of came in and out. Yeah. All right. Other comments or things that you're thinking about how you'll use this? How about you, Harriet? Since I picked on you earlier, I'll pick on you again. Oh, see how you are. <laughs> see how I am? That's me. <laughs> no, I'm excited because I always feel like the end of my party, I kind of just drop away and I don't feel good about it, how it's ended. And now I have something solid that I can really hold on to and I can put together and have a nice closure and it makes sense. Good. And I'll tell you, one of our national executive directors says that when she's doing her live show, she literally, like, she'll pull up a chair. I'm not going to stand up all the way because you'll see my penguin pajamas. But... <laughs> But anyway, but I do have my quick cooker shirt on, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good from here up, but below that, you don't want to see it. But anyway, um, but uh, what she says is she said, um, you know, so earlier I told you my name was so-and-so, I've been with Pampered Chef for so long, and I started because yada yada. And now I want to tell you why I stay. And she literally pulls up a chair and sits down, so she's like on everybody's level, and she pauses. And everybody is just like this, like waiting to hear what she's going to say. So it's, it's really powerful when you wrap it up that way, because you know how sometimes at the end of your show, you're like losing control of everything <laughs> and uh, live shows, especially. So when you do this, it's amazing how it can really get everybody's attention. Thank you, Kathy. You're so welcome. All right, anybody else want to share how they'll use it or what action they're going to take? Who's going to be bold? Looks like Sue is. Oh, nope, she left us. <laughs> Dang. Sue, you I'm left gonna, I'm going to put the pictures in, in the virtual party. I have to take a look at, at ones that you posted you said are in, in market imagery, but yeah, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incorporate them because that's the one thing I feel like. I feel like with the virtual party, it's, it's more difficult. And so, like the last like business opportunity game we play, it's kind of like a dead. It seems like all the time it's like deady. So yeah, I think I'm gonna incorporate these. So I'm actually doing a new, brand new outline that's shorter next week. 
So I'm definitely going to incorporate it. And so here's the other thing I always tell Yvonne, uh, uh, virtual people, Yvonne, is that if you're not um, creating enough desire during the virtual party for the opportunity mm -hmm. um, and really creating what I like to call possibility thinking, like most people that are doing virtual parties are going, it's a good deal. It's a really good deal. Like it's a good deal. Well, hello, we're women. We're smart. <laughs> we know it's a good deal. We're all going right. to want the kit. But mm -hmm. we have to talk about the opportunity. So there's a saying that says, sell the dream and not the deal. Now, I mean, I don't care if you let them know it's a good deal. They're, I mean, you should let them know. Um, there's actually a really um, cute new little um, image where it shows all three prices of the kit on one little image. And it's got a really cute little picture in the background. Um, but yeah, we got to create desire. And the other thing is to put pictures of you um, doing something that's business related. So like, uh, I'm going to talk about Julie because I've been working a lot with her later, lately. So um, Julie Ritter posts, um, oh, I forget, what did she call those, Mary, those posts that she did? Kind of like the did you know post. Yeah, did you know post, yeah. And yeah. so she'd say, did you know I get free products twice a year? And she's sitting there, you know, holding three stacks of boxes and um, you know, did you know that I can earn trips? And she has a picture of her husband. You know, did you know? I mean, you know, there's so many different things that you guys could talk about. Like every month, even just for doing two shows, you guys can get a gift. I mean, show a couple of the gifts that you've received. So just be thinking about how you can be creating desire, creating that possibility thinking. That's what I think. I think everyone needs specific ideas like that, honestly. Yeah. Because like when you get creative, like in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, how can we do that? Mm -hmm. You know, like, honestly, like you're saying, you're saying, like, I know, like in some of the posts, I'll say, and this comes in the kit, you know, or something like that. I try to mm -hmm. use like products that come in the kit, but yeah. it's true. That's like just focusing on the products. You need to focus on other things throughout. It's super, yeah. super important what you're saying. So any other specific, specific ideas on how we can share? Um, I think just talking about the benefits to you. So as you're planting seeds throughout the mm -hmm. show, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, if you're talking about an item in the kit, you can say this was my very first item that I got with Pampered Chef and mm -hmm. I made such and such. And, you know, now, oh my gosh, I can't tell you my cupboards are full. So you're talking about the benefits of having all these products, right? Especially as leaders, you get the free kits every year. Um, and so if you're not a leader, you want to be one, so you can say that, <laughs> right? So there's lots of benefits besides that, but, um, very specifically talking about, you know, how the business has benefited you or to share a consultant story. Um, I had somebody sharing the other day about a consultant who is a virtual consultant. She has severe health issues. She's on oxygen. Um, she really hasn't been able to hardly even leave her house in the last several years, and she just started the business and um, I'm trying to remember who told me this. And basically what she was able to do is she earned her first paycheck and she called her leader and started crying because she said, this is the first time I'm ever going to be able to buy my husband a birthday present with my own money. Oh, wow. So, I mean, how does that make you feel? Like, hello, don't you get goosebumps? Yeah. So, you know, sharing anything that appeals to emotion that, you know, really touches somebody's heart or that makes them laugh. Um, anytime I made anybody laugh, that's when I would always do a recruiting plug or a booking plug. You know, like if I was doing something with the show and I was doing a booking plug, I'd, they'd be laughing and I go, oh my gosh, you guys think this is fun. You should try the wine, cheese and chocolate show or, you know, whatever it is. That's really fun. And they're going, it's more fun than this. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to have one of those. Right. So you want to appeal to their um, emotions as well. Interesting concept. Yep. Yeah. So, and I can send you some notes on planting seeds. I just didn't do all of that in this. I wanted to have time to answer questions for you guys. No, that's good. That's what and I'm just thinking in my brain. And Mary, if it would be helpful, I can send a little kind of handout that helps them to outline their opening and their confident close. That'd be awesome. That'd be helpful. That'd be great. Yeah. I can't see. Okay. So somebody's shaking her head with glasses on. <laughs> Man Sue. Who's that? <laughs> that's Allison. Oh, Allison. So tell Allison. us what you thought, Allison. Can you unmute? 
There she is. Yes, that would be great. Okay, so what do you think about using this opportunity brochure? Have you ever shared the opportunity before to show? I've shared the opportunity, but not the brochure. So we'll definitely be going back to look through that. Um, my mom and I, the one that's right, well, she's underneath me right here, Cecilia. That's okay. Mom. That's my mom. We work together. Oh, I love it. Mother and daughter team. Woohoo. I talked to you about them, Kathy. They're a part of Melissa's team, and they were like, we're never going to recruit. And now oh. <laughs> you're telling our, our story about your rat mess up. I, think, oh, right. I, I write everyone out to Kathy. She knows about every one of y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. She brags about you guys all the time. Let me tell you what. So does Mary. So I'm going to be looking for Cecilia and Allison, is it? Yes. Okay. I'll be looking for your names. <laughs> How could you say I'm not going to recruit when you have the circle of honor leader as your leader? You know you're not going to get away with that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Right? I tried to slide, but I think she's falling out now, so. <laughs> what was that? You what? I said we tried to slide, but she's calling us out now. She's calling you out. That's yeah. right. Uh, you go, girl. <laughs> we started to spend time together and to earn products. That uh -huh. was the main nice. goal. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, like most people. Most people join because they want the products and they want to just have some fun, right? Exactly. So that's why I always list like five or six things in that category. So, well, good, you guys. Well, I would love to keep talking to you. It's so much fun, but I better let you go. I said this was only going to be an hour, and now we're already over. So, Mary, did you have any other questions or comments or anything you wanted to wrap up with? This was amazing. I'm going to be posting the link to watch this again. And I think it'll be good for you guys to be able to watch it again and write down some of the verbiage that Kathy shared. Cause that's always important, right? That's what we get stuck on is the verbiage. So mm -hmm. you had so many great ideas, Kathy. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to try some of this. Okay, groovy, groovy. So I'm going to, um, I'll pull up this handout. I need to just adapt it a little bit and I'll shoot it off to you and you can post it when you post the recording too, or shortly after. All okay. right. Just, just know, you guys, I, I rearranged our team anchored group to be unit, to, uh, learning units now. So I'll put all of this together in one learning unit. So it'll be in the feed, but then I'm going to, if you look to the left side of the screen under units, it'll all be under Kathy Cocazella's talk. Okay. Man, I made the unit, huh? <laughs> Pardon me? I made it into your units. I feel special. You're going to be in my unit. Your, your picture was in our um on our team page today so your picture will go in the unit too woo, woo. Woo. i made it big now yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you mary thank you guys right. so much for it's taking the time to come on board thank you thank you kathy work. i'll see you guys everybody get thank, you all. Thank, thank you all thank you good night thanks kathy, kathy. Yeah. all right we'll see you guys take care